You may be seated. We are very pleased to welcome you to the opening convocation of the 171st session of Rhodes College. Welcome to the class of 2023. We are so pleased to welcome you to our community. And we are so pleased to have so many family and friends here with us. Welcome as well to the Rhodes community. I'd also like to extend a special welcome to members of our Board of Trustee and Emeriti faculty who were able to join us this morning. I now have the honor and pleasure to introduce the 20th president of Rhodes College, Dr. Marjorie Haas. 
Thank you, Milton. What a joy it is to be here to welcome you, the class of 2023, to this opening convocation of our 171st year. We've gathered to mark what is a giant transformation and transition for you and also for your families. I am uh, delighted to have with us today my husband, the first gentleman of Rhodes College, Dr. Larry Haas. Will you stand so that you can join me in welcoming our class? Larry and I both look forward to getting to know each of you better over the next four years. We are already extremely proud of you. This was our most competitive admissions year ever. And each of you has earned a place in this class as a result of your accomplishments, your talents, and your promise. You're supported by your families. And you're also supported by the larger Rhodes College family, who've built the buildings in which you'll live and learn, contributed to the scholarships that are helping to pay for your education, built the endowment that funds professorships and programs, our faculty and staff have been preparing for your arrival, and the upper class students are excited to meet you. So even though you may feel a bit strange and out of place in this new environment, you truly are coming home. And you now belong to a lively and engaged community of learners. The word community gets used a lot sometimes without much content or meaning. And I want to explain to you what it means at Rhodes. At Rhodes, we take community seriously. We believe that the kind of education we provide can only happen when you live and work together. We expect you to learn from each other in class discussions, shared projects, common labs, but also in late night conversations and encounters over lunch. Your professors will foster collaboration, not competition. At Rhodes, we're more like the British Bake Off than The Bachelor. <laughs> we are more like the game Pandemic than League of Legends. Because we take community seriously, we're intentional about how we build it. And over the next few weeks, we will ask you to spend time thinking about what you have in common and how your differences shape you as individuals. We'll help you consider the ways the city of Memphis and its history fosters our learning. And we'll invite you to bring your whole self into our ongoing conversation. Most of all, we expect three things from you. Kindness, curiosity, and courage. Approaching each other with kindness means treating each other with inordinate respect. You're coming of age in a time when name calling passes for civic discourse and hate has become a political strategy. At Rhodes College, we resist those forces. We aim to be a beacon for kindness. We give everyone the benefit of the doubt. We keep an eye out for each other. We debate ideas, but we don't insult individuals. We make the well-being of our brothers, our sisters, our siblings, our business. Approaching each other with curiosity means bracketing assumptions. We don't subsume each other into pre-made categories or stereotypes. Instead, we ask, what's your story? What experiences have shaped you? And then we listen to the answers. As you meet each other, let curiosity rather than expectation guide you. Don't let the high school habit of forcing people into tiny boxes follow you to college. Don't let media inflected images of the meaning of a team jersey or a hijab or a pair of high heels keep you from getting to know the actual person who lives down the hall. 
Approach each other, approaching each other with courage means venturing beyond your comfort zones and taking intellectual and personal risks. Rhodes College is not so much a safe space as it is a brave space, one where we build the courage to know and let ourselves be known. Later this weekend, you will sign our honor code. You will join all of the long tradition of Rhodes College students in signing that code, and you will pledge to hold yourselves and each other to the highest standards of integrity. It takes great courage to live up to that expectation. My own understanding of community and the values that inform it has been shaped by my family's history. When my grandparents came to this country as refugees in about 1905, they were fleeing religious violence in Russia and the pogroms that were visited on Jewish villages. My grandmother was undocumented for much of her life here. They didn't have much formal schooling. They spoke Yiddish and a bit of Russian. They worked hard. They sent their sons to college and then medical school, which I think was mandatory for nice Jewish boys of that generation. Uh, my grandparents became worldly and well-read. Even though they were religious minorities and faced prejudice in this country too, they never doubted that they belonged here. They never doubted that they could be proud contributors to the American story. They raised my father to think of himself as the inheritor of both the old world Jewish values of learning and tradition and the new world values of, of freedom and diversity. And in turn, my father raised me to see our human differences as a source of strength and to recognize both the power and the limits of the narratives I inherited. Community as I learned it doesn't mean we erase the particularities of our own histories. It means we learn from our own as well as from each other's. It means kindness, curiosity, and courage. I look forward to getting to know each of you, to hearing your story, to seeing the community of Rhodes College enriched and expanded as you join it, and to seeing the ways you grow and change from your encounters here. I bid you all welcome. Thank you. Thank you, President Haas, for those wise and encouraging words. I'm now pleased to introduce our Rhodes Student Government President. I'm honored to have met Tony Eskridge three years ago when he was a student in my first year seminar. Um, he is a Clarence Day Scholar. He served as the chairman of our class council. In the past two summers, he's also been a fellow in our Rhodes Institute for Regional Studies and in our Summer Service Fellowship Program. Tony's majoring in urban studies and plans to start a career in community development and neighborhood reinvestment. Please join me in welcoming our RSG president, Tony Eskridge. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Rhodes College. Real quick, do you mind if I show you something? Hang on. It's a newspaper, that's all. <laughs> I like to read the news. It reminds me that the world is still spinning outside the gates. But today, when you read the news, the topics are almost more saddening than uplifting, with the problems of the world growing more complex and society growing more divided. But here's some uplifting news. The future politicians, doctors, lawyers, researchers, business leaders, and public servants who will solve the world's complex problems are sitting right here in this room. I'm talking about you guys. <laughs> the world's problems are growing more, more complex, but that's exactly why we're here. We're all here to grow our capacity to think critically to solve the problems of tomorrow. Now, before you embark on this journey, I'm going to offer you two reminders to maximize your college years, and really every stage of your life, just two reminders. My first and most important reminder for you is to take care of yourself. 
They say your college years can be the best four years of your life, but there will also be some painful moments along the way. You may experience a clash of cultures when your home and how you were raised doesn't look like Rhodes or a big city like Memphis. Perhaps you're sitting here 100% certain of what you'll major in, but later realize that subject wasn't for you. Or maybe you have no clue what you want to major in, and a year from now you still can't decide. There may come a time when you try your hardest on a challenge, but feel as though you could have done more and disappoint yourself. The world can feel so small in these moments. I know because I have been in every one of these situations. And I was able to get through every low in college when I remembered to take care of myself. Self-care looks different for everyone. Maybe it looks like blasting Truth Hurts by Lizzo in your car, or taking a study break with friends at 11 p.m. to make a donut run, or watching that season of The Office for the 10th time. Finding time may be a challenge, but journaling and reading for fun have served me well. I'll always be an advocate for the Counseling Center on campus. I saw my counselor regularly last year, and I plan to continue to go. It's free, and I promise it will give you so much peace of mind. Rhodes students are notorious for having busy schedules, but leave time to do what you need to do to enrich your body, your mind, and your spirit. My second reminder is to take care of this community. A few months ago, when you chose to come to Rhodes College, you may not have realized it, but you chose more than to just take classes here. You chose to learn from this amazing cohort of highly decorated, high-achieving faculty. You chose Memphis, which I have learned, and you will soon learn, is one of the most significant and interesting cities in America. You chose to be a part of this student body. Perhaps it was your tour guide when you visited you liked his experience, or the letter from a current Rhodes student that admissions sent you in the mail, or maybe a student spotlight your family saw on social media. That's the college experience that you wanted. All of this is to say, you chose this community, and you should be proud of your choice. This community is precious, and that's why it's so important that we take care of and support each other. If your friend plays a sport, go to the game. If your teacher is giving an evening lecture, go listen to them. If your friend does theater or sings, go to their performance. On a more serious note, no matter where you grew up, no matter your race, and no matter your gender identity or ability, you should feel like you belong here. And as a community that takes care of and supports each other, we must make sure that our words and our actions make everyone feel like they belong here. Rhodes College's legacy is strong because of its diversity and not in spite of it. Take care of each other. It's the newspaper again. This is your reminder that the world is still spinning and the problems are growing more and more complex. But in four years, you will be ready. And if you remember to take care of yourself and to take care of your community, you will find your time here enjoyable and rewarding. Thank you, and once again, welcome to Rhodes College. Thank you, Tony, that's awesome. Today, the faculty members at Rhodes College, all of these wonderful people sitting on the stage here with us, we begin our formal relationship with you. You are our students. We can't wait to get this process started. We want to join you in creating an amazing and interesting learning environment that challenges and nurtures you for the next four years, but really for the rest of your lives. This afternoon, or this morning, sorry, I have the pleasure of introducing an award-winning faculty member who exemplifies our commitment to you. As I present this award, listen for what it means to develop this relationship between students and faculty. Listen to what us as the faculty, we are bringing to you. This is our pledge to you as students at Rhodes to help you flourish as students and as fellow, fellow community members. The award is named for Dr. Jameson Jones, a member of the Rhodes class of 1936. 
He, was joined, he joined the faculty at Rhodes in 1955 and served as the college's chief academic officer for more than 15 years. In his honor, the award is intended to honor the, a member of the faculty who's established an outstanding record of service to the college. I want to thank Dr. John Gladney of Shreveport, Louisiana, who was able to join us this morning. He's a member of the class of 1974, a former trustee of the college, and he generously endowed the Jameson M. Jones Award. Thank you. Today's recipient of the Jameson M. Jones Award for Outstanding Faculty Service has embraced the spirit envisioned by Dr. Jones. With much joy and respect, I'd like to invite Professor Pam Church to join me at the podium. Professor Pam Church joined the business department in 1988. Since joining the Rhodes College faculty, she has been teaching undergraduate and graduate accounting courses in the areas of financial, managerial, and governmental accounting, as well as auditing. As the chair of our Master's in Science in Accounting program, she assists students in preparing for careers in various areas of accounting and serves as a liaison between the college and many, many accounting firms and businesses. She's also the parent of three Rhodes alumni. Yeah. Yes. The many letters of nomination that we received note that Dr. Church is a skilled, effective, and gracious administrator and teacher, known for her sense of patience and collegiality. As the chair of our thriving business department and a key member of many key committees at the college, she's always been generous with her time, willing to forgo her own interests for the good of the whole community. Professor Church has also been a model academic advisor for undergraduate students, for you, and for her graduate students in the MS accounting program. One faculty colleague notes that Professor Church is exceptional in her service to all of our students. She cares about students no matter whether they are excellent performers or students who might need a little more help. I know that she's always supportive and encouraging to students. She never gives up on anyone. I love that. Professor Church has also truly distinguished herself through her work in directing the college's accounting program. Under her leadership, students have been placed in professional um, careers all around the country. I'm happy to report that since the program's inception, she has a 100% placement rate of her graduates, so not bad. Professor Church spends considerable time throughout the academic year networking with accounting professionals, building relationships to promote our program and our students. She has worked with our Career Services um, Office on many, many events, one of which is the Meet the Firms Career and Recruiting event that brings dozens of CPA and other corporations to our campus. It's a huge event. I hope you will be involved in that if you are interested in those opportunities for a career. Professor Church is also the sole academic representative on the Tennessee State Board of Accountancy, which oversees the CPA profession in our state. Having been nominated by the governor of the state of Tennessee for this position, she has a unique opportunity to have an impact on and connect Rhodes students to the accounting profession more broadly. For her steady and effective leadership and her seemingly infinite reserves of energy and good judgment, Professor Church's accomplishments have created a true legacy at Rhodes. With this award, Professor Church joins a distinguished group of faculty who've demonstrated through their outstanding records of service 
that they embody the kind of intellectual leadership and commitment to service that were so important to Dr. Jones and remain the core fundamental principle of our relationship as faculty to our students. Please join me in congratulating Professor Pam Church. I now have the pleasure of introducing our speaker, Dr. Amy Risley. As a professor in the Department of International Studies and its current chair, for the past 14 years at the college, she has been a teacher and scholar with a specialization in Latin American studies and has established herself as a teacher who puts students at the center of her classroom. As the winner of the 2019 Clarence Day Award for Excellence in Teaching, she's described by many of her students as having a passion for teaching, being invested in student learning, and as exemplifying the ideal professor. Please join me in welcoming Professor Amy Risley to the podium for her presentation today, Making Connections and Building Community Through a Liberal Arts Education. Thank you for that very warm welcome. And now it's my turn to welcome you, class of 2023. We're so happy to meet all of you and welcome families, friends, and special guests. As Provost Moreland mentioned a moment ago, my area of expertise is, in fact, international studies, international and comparative politics, more specifically. So some of my friends and family members advised me to avoid those subjects during my remarks today. <laughs> Politics can be so contentious, right? Very divisive. And in the United States, some of us have already alluded to this, we're living through a moment of tremendous political discord. So we agreed that I should focus on a far less controversial topic, and that topic is religion. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Uh, please don't head for the exits. Stay, stay put, thank you. Um, I'm very happy to meet all of you. This morning, my eight-year-old son, I was taking him to school, and we were casually chatting about the fact that I would be giving an address in front of hundreds of people, and his response was, I should go do that. I'd much rather do that than go to third grade today. You have it easy. <laughs> so you can see in our family, we have a deep abiding passion and commitment to education, <laughs> clearly, <laughs> as I took him screaming to school. Uh, on a much more serious note, I want to congratulate you on choosing Rhodes College. You've made a wise choice in my humble and completely biased opinion. I cannot provide an objective viewpoint because I've worked here for some 14 years and that is my entire career as a professor. And I'm very fond of this place. You've made a wise choice because Rhodes is unique and special. But you've also made an excellent decision because you are pursuing a liberal arts education. And so this morning I'm going to focus on an aspect of liberal arts education that I have found especially meaningful, and we've already heard the word today, it's wonderful, community. I'm gonna talk about placing our education in the service of building and strengthening community. Many of you probably already know that the term liberal arts has ancient roots, deriving from the Greek word eleutheros and the Latin word liber. Hope I pronounced those right. My GRS colleagues will tell me if that was correct. Both meaning free. Liberal education has traditionally celebrated and nurtured human freedom. It liberates us to explore and fulfill the promise of our own highest talents. We gain knowledge of the wider world we learn how to carefully read texts, to think critically, to express ourselves in writing, to engage in creative problem solving. 
Along the way, we're exposed to diverse viewpoints and contending perspectives on pressing questions, as well as different theoretical and methodological tools. We search for meaning and values. And we become empowered individuals who can grapple with complexity and adapt to continual change, because that is what the world offers us, constant change, the need to adapt, and complexity. So that's what you signed up for, right? I hope. Good. But education for human freedom is also education for human community. Some of the most eloquent and thoughtful supporters of liberal arts education, much more eloquent than I, have made similar arguments. For example, Professor Bell Hooks, who self-identifies as a dissident, feminist, black intellectual, has written that education can be a means to restoring and creating community. In her book titled Teaching Community, A Pedagogy of Hope, Hooks talks about, and I quote, beloved communities where there is no domination stemming from racism and patriarchy and other oppressive forces. So I take inspiration from Professor Hooks, and also from perhaps someone who's not as famous, William Cronin, who wrote an essay many years ago that I have never forgotten. He said, above all, it's about connecting. Who is Cronin? He is a professor of history, geography, and environmental studies at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, which is my beloved undergraduate alma mater. He wrote an essay for Phi Beta Kappa. It's our nation's oldest and most prestigious academic honor society and a champion of the liberal arts and sciences. Some of you will be invited to join, and I urge you to do so. His insight was that a liberal education entails gaining the knowledge, wisdom, and generosity to connect with others. Allow me to repeat that. A liberal education means gaining the knowledge, wisdom, and generosity to connect with others. So liberal education nurtures individual freedom, yes, but it also gives us the tools we need to work in diverse communities and do our part to build strong communities. Now this morning I don't have sufficient time to summarize the philosophical foundations of this argument. You can thank me later. Uh, but rather than talk about the why, right, why we connect with others and build community, I will instead discuss how we can do this. And here's some wonderful news this morning. You've already joined a learning community. You're here at Rhodes. You're with other students, faculty, staff, and our staff members are terrific. Our senior leadership is extraordinary. And you see all of these faculty colleagues behind me sharing the stage, all of them. I hate to have my back to them, I keep turning. <laughs> you couldn't ask for a more talented and engaged group of faculty, really. You're going to, to love them. All of us at Rhodes are completely invested in your learning and your well-being. And I'm confident that the bonds you create on this campus will last a lifetime. But I'd like to suggest two additional strategies for making genuine, meaningful connections that will actually take you off campus. And here's the first one. Seek out opportunities to connect to communities in Memphis. Volunteer, do service learning, do community-engaged research. We have a lot of opportunities. Memphis has a robust nonprofit sector, activist communities, communities of faith, and various other groups to connect with. Did you know that Newsweek has named Rhodes the number one service-oriented college in the United States? You probably did know that because we tell anyone who will listen, <laughs> like, did you know? <laughs> Uh, check out our website, you'll see. Um, Washington Monthly also identified Rhodes as the top college in the nation for the number of hours that students dedicate to service. We've gotten some second place rankings, but let's not dwell on those today. <laughs> we'll just focus on being number one. This is not easy work. 
One of my former students spent time volunteering in a variety of organizations, different types, over the years. I'll never forget her description of service learning, and I quote, service learning kicks my butt every time, but I've gotten used to that, she said. Why does it kick our nether regions? I'm looking for a more polite term than but it's not working. Um, Community-engaged learning challenges us to be empathetic. It challenges us to approach others with humility. You don't presume to have all of the answers to problems. You don't presume to carry all of the solutions for fixing organizations that you're working in. Working in diverse groups helps us learn how to respectfully engage in dialogue with people who have different views and life experiences. President Haas mentioned this. What could be more urgent now? This is a moment of hyper-polarized politics. I broke my promise I'm talking politics. Sorry, friends and family, you steered me right, but I can't help it. This is a moment of hyper-polarization, incivility, and hostility towards one another. Some Americans are defining our perceived opponents as being outside of the community, as no longer members of the same community. Some extremists are carrying out horrifying acts of violence against those outsiders. Can liberal arts magically fix all of this? No, but liberal arts education entails actually seeking out perspectives that differ from our own. Listening carefully, disagreeing respectfully, and supporting our own arguments with evidence robustly with factual evidence, and engaging in a healthy civil dialogue because, above all, it's about connecting. Let me propose a second strategy for making mean meaningful connections and building community. Go abroad. Help create international communities that transcend borders. You were expecting a member of the International Studies Department to say that, right? My colleagues probably saw that coming from a mile away, or 1.6 kilometers if you've already spent time overseas. <laughs> but International Studies is not the only group. We may be the coolest, but we're not the only group on campus challenging students to expand their global awareness and strengthen their intercultural competence. These are liberal arts ideals. These are liberal arts ideals that are shared widely across our campus, and we are doing that because we're trying to prepare you for a very interconnected world. So I invite you to study foreign languages and different cultures in the classroom and study abroad, intern, volunteer, travel overseas. Class of 2023, some of you are coming to Rhodes from other countries. We see the beautiful flags in the back of this auditorium. So a very special welcome to our international students. Let's give them a quick hand. Welcome. They probably stopped listening to me five minutes ago because they said, yeah, I'm already doing that, <laughs> what you said. Um, students who go abroad have the best stories. The tales they tell go way beyond descriptions of the delicious foods they ate, how many kinds of bratwurst they serve in Germany, the historic monuments they visited, famous works of art that they enjoyed. They talk about people, people, their host families, the new friends they made, how amazing it felt when they uh, got someone to laugh at a joke that they awkwardly made in that other language, right, that different language that they've been struggling with, how good that feels. One of my former students spent a semester in Jordan. Her face would always light up when she talked about the kindness and hospitality of people there and in other countries that she had visited in the Middle East. Another student studied in Argentina for a semester, and one of the highlights of her time was volunteering with a community center in Buenos Aires where she tutored children after school. The Rhodes vision was etched 
in her brain, so it made sense of her to choose a community-engaged program. She wanted to make a connection. Above all, it's about connecting. Up to this point, I've talked about the local and the global separately, but of course, we know they're closely related. I invite you all to explore the spaces where the local and the global intersect. There are many opportunities to encounter different cultures here in Memphis. For example, we are home to sizable immigrant and refugee communities, and many of our students work closely with them. Their liberal arts education is helping them gain the knowledge, the wisdom, the generosity to connect with others. Class of 2023, I urge you to think about community today and every day. How will you use your liberal arts training to restore, build, and strengthen community? How might you serve and empower other people? How will you place your education in the service of humanity? Because we expect nothing less of all of you. Thank you. Parents and guests, immediately following the alma mater, the recessional will begin. The class of 2023 will gather in their PA groups on the lawn for photos and goodbyes. Now I would like to introduce the four students who will lead us in the Rhodes College alma mater. Ranim Imam is senior music major from Memphis, Tennessee. Amanda Salazar from Miami, Florida is a senior neuroscience major and music minor. Eric Simon is a senior business major and psychology minor from Austin, Texas. And Chandler Hall is a senior from Houston, Texas, who will complete the double major in history and music. Please stand, if you are able, for the singing of the Rhodes College alma mater. Dear alma mater, kind the fate that links our lives with thee. For God's own power that made thee great is the truth that makes us free. Thy torch has touched our hearts with flame, a yearning soul refined. Through thee we learn the higher aim and train the truer mind. O leader to the larger light, Rhodes College neath thy wings, thine own in love unite and each a tribute brings and dream such dreams as old can dream and visions youth can see keep lighted in our hearts the flame once kindled there of thee 